reading for uh, November 2017. I am using the Angel Tarot cards by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. Um, this is a general reading, guys, so if you would like a personal reading, um, if you have a burning question or you need guidance or anything, um, please, that information is below in the description box and you can get that there. Um, I, you know, listen, uh, what I do is I, I shuffle the cards until they fall out. Of course, I meditate before I have an intention um, to get to the truth and some wonderful guidance. And the good thing about these readings are that they're like a roadmap. So it's almost like, okay, so if you hear that it's going to rain outside, you take an umbrella, don't you? So these readings can prepare you for energies that are going on during the month. And so, you know, you can protect yourself, take care of yourself, think, oh, right, I'm not going to react to that. <laughs> I, have to, I do that all the time. Anyway, so I want to thank everybody for the love last week, for the likes, the comments, the shares, and the subscriptions. And please, if you do like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Share the video if you feel inspired and comment. I always respond to comments. Last month we did uh, angel numbers, which were really interesting. Um, and we got I got lots of comments for that and I, I'm really grateful for that, thank you. Um, so this, week we, this month we won't be doing the angel uh, numbers, but that'll come up again, you know. And, uh, and let me see, what else do we have? I think that's it. Yes, that's it. So what I like to do is to start off with an inquiry card. I think it kind of um, grounds the reading. And, and it's amazing how, you know, the reading kind of goes back to that, right? So we're going to do the inquiry cards. Here they are, beautiful beautiful inquiry cards and let's see what our question for the month should be what question should we focus on in the month of November what question would be most helpful for us to ask for the month? I'm not going to take it until it falls out that's it oh there it is oh what am I expecting? And what a perfect answer, uh, question, sorry. What a, perfect, what a perfect question to ask this month in particular. You know, we have this new full moon. Actually, I'm doing this really late. I really have to apologize. So the full moon is actually to, tonight, 10.22 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it's uh, 1.22 a.m., so it'll be... Uh, November the 4th on uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, so, the 3rd or the 4th. So today's the 3rd. Hopefully I'll get this out tonight and you'll be able to prepare for it. I shall be putting all my crystals to charge in this beautiful manifesting full moon in Taurus. It's exciting. So I thought it's actually perfect. Today is a beautiful energy. It's lovely. So now, the significant card that I asked for, for kind of the general reading, um, two popped out, but this was really interesting. Oh, it's the Knight of Earth, right? It's the Green Knight. He's the only Knight in this deck that isn't actually moving. What He's, he's prepared to move. He's kind of uh, surveying the planes and he's He's uh, strategizing and he will move forward methodically and strategically. So this is saying it's time to take action. You've got to keep doing things this month. It's very important to keep the movement going, right? And um, I always think of this as the material realm. This is also the full moon in Taurus manifesting energy. Um, it's re anyway, I'm not, I, I won't go into that. I, I want to kind of focus on the reading first and we'll get into the astrology aspects in a moment. So uh, what am I expecting? 
I am expecting a lot green too, manifesting energy, green for money. <laughs> Beautiful. There we go. We keep it moving. We've got to keep the momentum going. And we got 13, the release. Now this is a major change, but this to me is a transformational card. And it kind of makes sense. So in numerology, November, the, no, 2017, right, adds up to 10. And we've talked about this. Uh, 10 is the completion of something, you know, of an era. Um, it's the end, of, numerology goes up to nine and then it starts again one to nine. So this is new beginnings. When you want to change direction in your life, this is the year to do it. You are supported by the universe if you do so. Now, 2017 adds up to 10, which reduces down to one. That's the new beginning year, right? So 10 and the number 11 for, uh, for November, right? It's the 11th month, so 10 and 11 is 21. Um, 21 in the major arcana is the world card, right? So that is the completion of an era, right? And it's new beginnings. You can go forward in a new direction. So also, so that's the energy, right, of this month. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the one and two, 21, two and one, reduces down to three, which is creation. You know, it's creativity, keeping, you know, when you are in creation, you are connected to source energy, right? To God, um, to a higher power. That's, you're in the zone and you're creating. We're being asked to create, be creative this month. Now, the 13th, this is the end of a phase, you see? It's like, it's a spiritual transformation. And we are, being asked, we are being encouraged. Look, the sun is in Scorpio, right? And Scorpio is about deep uh, uncovering things, deep, yes, it's about sexuality, but it's more about getting under and down in the dirt. So this is the thing, in, in Scorpio, right? We've come out of Virgo and we're in fall, but fall is all about dying, right? Getting ready to rebirth. This is releasing the old so that the new can come in. So on the floor are all these dead leaves and they're dying and all the, the trees are like twigs, the leaves have fallen off. Now, underneath in the roots, there's a transformation going on, right? Down underneath in the deep, dark dirt. There is all this transformation and all, there's a lot going on underneath that we can't see, right? We can't see what's going on and then it just comes out in the spring. So it doesn't just happen. It is doing all that work during winter. So it's already started that work in the deep dark underneath. So this is asking you, it's so apropos for for Scorpio, this is asking us to transform, to let go, purge the old so that the new can come in. So this is definitely, you can even think about it as like or reorganizing your house, getting rid of old stuff, stuff that's blocking you. You know, you can feng shui your house. I actually looked at my money corner in my bedroom and thought, oh no, I need to clear that corner out. <laughs> so that I can bring in the new, let go of all that old stuff and bring in the new. Now we have the two of earth, which is saying in this deck, it's saying that you need to make a decision. The two of earth traditionally, I always think of balance and being in the moment, you know. Um, here it's saying you've got a lot going on and you need to make consider a more playful approach. So sometimes you can bring levity into a situation, right? L when you bring levity into a situation, um, things don't seem so serious and it's not so uh, intense. Don't forget Scorpio is a very intense uh, sign. 
Now we have the five of earth. And the five of earth indicates it's also, look, these are manifesting. These are the physical realm, right? The material realm. So you've got three cards in the material realm so far. And the five of earth is about fears surrounding money, right? It's about uncertainty. And it's, so when this card comes up, I watched the spiritual guru the other day on YouTube. Sometimes I do that for inspiration. And uh, he was saying how, look, when you're in your head and you're thinking of the past, that's really, a, you know, it's not, the, I always say, this is what I always say, the past is a dream, right? The future is fantasy. And right now is the present, is a gift, is a present. No, is the is a gift. That's why we call it the present. <laughs> I knew it pulls that up. Oh dear. Anyway, so this is about for me. This is about coming back into the moment. And we need to listen. I've said this a million times. You may not have enough money to pay the bills right now, right? You may not have enough. Uh, what can you do? Right now, you can't pay the bills. What's the point in worrying about not paying the bills? There is no point in wasting energy on that. What we're being asked to do this month and what we're being encouraged is to be in creation. Now, when we're in creative energy, things manifest in creative energy and we can manifest that money is going to come in. If you believe it's going to come in, it's going to come in. What am I expecting? I'm expecting my bills to get paid. <laughs> Don't worry. Offer your worries up to God, to the angels, to your belief system, you know, and trust that you are going to be taken care of. But stay in action. Don't be inactive because this is definitely like you can't sit at home on the couch and say, oh, you know, it's okay. The bills will come in, right? The money for the bills will come in. Hey, they may. They may just, but this is saying move forward because when you're moving forward, you're moving energy forward, right? So just keep on doing what you're doing and stay in creative energy. Pray and meditate and do something spiritual or creative and, and things will work out. Now, what's really interesting, we have the night of water right in the middle of it. And this is kind of like, this is saying uh, this can be falling in love the night. This can be news of a dashing knight in shining armor coming in and sweeping us off our feet. Well, what's really interesting is on the 7th of November, Venus moves into Scorpio. It's a beautiful day, darling. Venus is also about finances too. And, and then... On the 11th, it goes, it conjuncts with Jupiter in Scorpio. And that, on a personal level, can be beautiful energy. So I think that's on a Monday, the 11th. So the weekend before, make sure that you take advantage of that energy. Go out, enjoy yourself. You know, maybe you'll meet someone. If not meet someone, go on a date night with your lover right now. So you can get that deeper, deeper connection. Definitely love is in the air this month, for sure. Now, this is interesting. We have the seven of air. Now, when the seven of air comes into a reading, there's the seven of air, look, right? So there looks like there's some kind of, you know, there's conflict going on and it's saying, Listen, sometimes plans don't go the way you want them to go. And for me, the seven of air, I always think of the seven of air as something is, somebody's not telling the truth, right? Somebody's not being completely honest about the situation. Listen, that can be globally, where all this stuff is coming out. It's unbelievable. All these secrets are coming up. That's very what's going on right now. Um, 
astrologically. So this can be two things. This can be you not telling the truth and really if we are going to see some truths in ourselves and some of us will have the uh, self-awareness to take that as a lesson, learn from it, gain from it in order to move forward. And some people are in denial and will not, cannot or will not look at the truth in a situation. This is saying, listen, look, either someone isn't being honest with you or you're not being honest with you or others around you. Either way, you really have to look at this. You know, around the 18th, we've got the new moon, right? The new moon in Scorpio. And we have these clusters of, we have this cluster of planets in, in Scorpio. Um, but we also have Mars and Mars squaring uh, Pluto. Now, Mars and Pluto are both planets of Scorpio. This might be some tension. This is, this is the kind of thing, it's interesting because I, I think I'm getting that for this. This is the kind of thing that when you're aware, of, look, you can't deny it. You can't stay at home and not engage in this. This energy is going to be there. The more you ignore it, the more it kind of will come out. So somebody may say something that's gonna get your back up. This is saying, uh, deal with it, bring it into the light, but don't, uh, so somebody may hurt you, but don't hurt them back. And you know, that's scorpionic energy. You're going to want to really sting them and hurt them back, but don't, don't hurt them back. Definitely bring it out into the open, address it diplomatically, perhaps talk it over with people, but don't go with the urge, right? Uh, don't go with that urge to, uh, to hurt someone back because it's, it's not good it's not good but this is definitely what I was talking about at the beginning of the reading when I said look if somebody tells you it's going to rain take an umbrella <laughs> right if some if you're hearing that it's going to it can be contentious during that time around the 18th uh, then be prepared protect yourself right protect yourself but anyway, it's all saying that we're coming to the end of a situation, right? And we're moving on to better things. Now, what I've just realized that we have the king of air. So with that difficult aspect to, towards the end of the month on the 18th with the new, this is a new, very powerful. Now, you know, this isn't something else I want to say. On new moons, it's where we plant the seeds, right? And then in the full moon following, it's where it comes to fruition. So whatever we're doing, we need to plant seeds on the new moon, right? On this uh, new moon coming up on the 18th. Now, it's a contentious energy around that time. So we also have the king of air, which is saying speak your truth, right? So speak your mind with confidence. But do it, do it diplomatically and impartially. Um, the King of Air is, is like the judgment card, right? He's the champion for justice. So maybe this challenging uh, energy is going to be contentious and it's going to be hard sometimes uh, to, you know, sometimes it's, it's hurtful, this, you can get hurt. Um, but this is saying bring in a professional, get professional advice, be diplomatic, just what I said before. So these cards kind of go hand in hand. I feel that somebody is going to hurt you um, and it's the potential to happen around the 18th. This could be happening before or after. Um, but you know, if this does happen, please get someone in, be impartial, don't, uh, don't sting. And that's what you, you're going to want to do. But uh, don't allow yourself, don't run away from it either. It's very important not to hide from this. It's definitely important to bring this out into the open. Because that which 
is kept in the dark, festers and grows and becomes more powerful, right? Now, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned that in, in, the, in Scorpio, we have the sun and we have Jupiter, right? And of course, we've got Venus going into it. Uh, but Jupiter is not only about bigger, better, more. It's also about power. You know, so, um, you know, if we don't bring things out, because Scorpionic is very down, deep, right? So if we don't bring things up, then uh, they can fester and get more and more powerful, and, uh, uh, and it's not a good thing. So we need to bring it out into the open. We need to bring it out into the light where it can shrivel and die. <laughs> Um, so I think that's very important to keep in mind. Now, we also we have two aces, right? We have this passionate, wonderful ace, and we have this glorious manifesting ace. Um, so the ace of earth and the ace of fire. Now, this is like, you know, exciting opportunity, and this is an inflow of, uh, of abundance. So we have all these interesting opposing energies. I mean, it's going to be a really fascinating month. It really is. So I want to say that um, I think that the fourth, the third and the fourth, depending on where you are, third definitely, and the fourth is a beautiful energy. And we also have the seventh and the 13th, right? The seventh is when uh, Venus goes into Scorpio and then it gets right next to Jupiter on the 13th. It gets, it conjuncts with Jupiter. This is a beautiful energy per personally. So this is also, you've got this beautiful night. This is an emotional card. And it's like a really balanced kind of reading when I look at it because there's a lot of manifesting uh, energy and there is, so there's a lot of material realm. You've got the beautiful new um, opportunity coming in. So I see, look, this is so funny because this is at the beginning, this is at the end. So this is a transformation, purging and letting things go so that new things can come in. So it looks really exciting and it's all in, what am I expecting, right? This new moon is a very, Sorry, this full moon uh, coming up tonight, tomorrow, is really powerful manifesting uh, moon. And there's some beautiful harmonious energy surrounding it. So it's really important to do kind of a ritual. If you have your crystals, put them out to charge in this beautiful, magnificent manifesting moon. Uh, let them charge out there and... Um, and, and do an intention and, you know, try to let go of things, organize things, throw things out, get rid of rubbish. And uh, when you're, I always say, write your intentions down. Now, don't write, oh, I want a car, I want a, I, I want a lover, I want a house, I want this. Not a laundry list of physical things. Don't do that. It's, it's about imagining that you have what you desire. Imagine that you have the man or the woman of your dreams, right? Or the person of your dreams. Imagine that you have that person in your life and imagine how it would feel with that person in your life right now and write those feelings down. Don't write, I want a lover. Write how it would feel. Now you have to imagine yourself with that person in order to be able to describe the feelings. Now, thoughts are electric, feelings are magnetic. So as you're imagining, you know, having that car that you want, how would that feel? How exciting would that be? So you have to say, oh my God, I've got this car. Oh, I can't wait, I'm going out, it's fantastic. Let me call everyone up, I've got this fabulous new car. You know, that's what you have to write. You have to be in that energy to attract it and bring it in. So write those feelings down, be as detailed as you can. And what I always do, I'll put, you know, I have this beautiful, um, I have this beautiful uh, sachet of, 
uh, lavender and and I get you know I've got some dried flowers here I'll put I'll put my intention in a lovely little envelope either one like this or one you can't see and I wrap it up with ribbons and I put it out in the moonlight and then I put it on my altar and I forget about it and then look at it later whenever not you know maybe look at it at the full moon uh, sorry at the new moon or sometimes I leave it up there for an hour and I look at uh, a year and then I go back and I look and I go wow that all came true it's fabulous so you know that's the magic so now I'm going to do an extra oracle card and this is you know an angel reading so I wanted to um, connect with one of my guides who's the queen of angels mother Mary love mother mary and let's see what mother mary the queen of angels has to say for us now this is a beautiful deck uh by alana fairchild just gorgeous and the artwork is just incredible let me just put a crystal on here mother mary what wonderful guidance inspiration and blessings can you give us for the month of november Mother Mary, what do we have for everyone? There's wonderful guidance and blessings for November. Thank you for coming in. Let's see what we have. Oh, oh, that flew out. There's no mistake. <gasps> I can't make this up. Our Lady of Manifest Miracles. How amazing is that? Wow. How beautiful. Well, this is what it's saying. What can what am I expecting, right? I'm expecting miracles. I'm expecting manifested miracles. And that's what we have to do with this energy. It's so important, particularly in this month, we have to focus on what's working as opposed to what's not. Don't focus on your problem. Don't focus on your bills. Don't focus on that. Focus on what you've earned and how well you've done and focus on creativity. It's, it's why I wanted to kind of do this reading today this uh, angel reading our lady of manifest miracles offer up your fears and your problems to mother mary she'll take them and ask for her help in manifesting your miracles and your reality when i look at this reading with all of it i see oh wow look this other this is so this is so interesting. I picked up the cards and one fell out and it's Our Lady of Passion, which is exactly what I'm seeing here. You know, I'm seeing we've got to be look, we've got this beautiful passionate emotional card. We have we have to be in our passion and creativity and so that we can manifest the wonderful things that we all deserve you know we have to quieten the monkey mind we've got to meditate go inside all the answers are within and you quieten your mind when you go in and you can have clear intentions you have clarity when you go inside and you meditate I just want to mention that on the 21st the Sun moves into Sagittarius and we'll kind of have this big <sighs> sigh of relief. And, and that is because a Scorpio can be so intense. Um, I, I kind of, There's so much more going on astrologically. And I think I may have to do, just do a separate video just for that because it's, it's re there's a lot going on. And I could go on for hours. I don't want to do that. I've already been going on for 30 minutes. So anyway... Have a wonderful, blessed month. I love you all, and I'll see you next month.
For a personal reading, please email mary at liveinthesolution.com.